Hi, this is RGK. Uh, due to time constraints, I have to change my formula and I'm gonna try to do multiple games at the same time without a script. So, I apologize for my English. So for this first video on this theme, we're actually going back to local multiplayer games and we'll start with Guardians of the Past. It mixes two concepts that we see usually. One is a simple deathmatch between people, they grab power-ups and kill each other. And the other one is a few, what a few games have been doing is that you build traps and then usually you try to reach the exit. But here, since it's mixed with a deathmatch, first you place your traps and then you fight in the map full of traps. There are tons of these traps that I love, like the ones with spikes, of course, the jump pad that flips someone in the water, or the one that inverts your controls, and then someone, someone is going towards the right, they walk on top of this tile with, with this trap, and then suddenly they walk left into another trap, or they die, or something like that. I'm just not too fond of the fighting itself, because the, the characters have like a lot of health. It displays three hearts, but it's, it doesn't work like that. You don't lose one heart every time you get hit. So it means that the combat uh, can, can last for a long time with people whacking it at each other and it doesn't feel very impactful. So it's, it's a good concept. Emergency Water Landing reminds me of Think of the Children. It was a game in which the players were uh, cooperating in order to save a few kids from imminent death. Here it's also about saving people after a plane crashed in the sea, but it's not cooperative, it's competitive. Which means that it's a perfectly valid strategy to ram into your opponent and steal their passengers. And it's a lot of fun. There isn't a lot of content in the game and it doesn't play online as well, that's why it's quite cheap. But it's still worth it for a few rounds of, of just fun and laughter. Stab, stab, stab is very creepy. The creatures are flesh birds trying to stab each other. It can feel very brutal, which is nice, but also it's very awkward to control. And I cannot say that I really like that because we struggle just to get on top of platforms or to go where we want. And that usually doesn't sit well in a party with casual players. And also it's so disgusting that most people don't want to play it because uh, when you get a power up it's like a mutation and you get two more on your face uh, or maybe wings because you know it's flesh birds but they, they need a power up to fly. And then the people with most power ups are actually like gods. They can do many things and the, other wo the others are, are stuck to the ground and they cannot do anything. It's frustrating. There is a survival mode with infinite waves of enemies and you can play this with friends or bots or alone. And at some point I became a god. I was soaring through the sky, mashing gunning beaks like spikes at enemies. I felt great for a moment, but then since uh, no one was able to challenge me, I then committed suicide because I was bored. So yeah, it's kind of an awkward game. I don't really recommend it, but it's, it's unique. Hunt and Sneak is a game that I think is conceptually flawed. Uh, some players are invisible and uh, the other one is chasing after them. On paper, it sounds like a good idea. But then give casual players a controller and tell them, yeah, okay, you're invisible, now figure out the rest. They they already struggle to move normally in, in a normal game, but then if they cannot even see their character, it just doesn't work. On top of that, the maps are very dark. There are fun things in there, each creature has a different power which can be used like a teleport, a shield or these sort of things that spice things up. And the graphics are cute, so there are good things in here but I just think that it, it doesn't work. The concept is flawed and it was the same for Invisigun Heroes that Total Biscuit was trying to, to push. Oh I don't understand why people don't, don't buy this game but it's just that Invisible characters that you cannot see, that you don't know if you're bumping into walls, it's just not, not very nice to play. Next we have the prison. So this is also the concept of blending in, but different. It's more like in the vein of hidden plain sight. Non-player characters on the screen and the players initially don't know who is who. And they have to figure out by moving like left, right, left, right. Okay, this one is following my every move, so this is my character and the players have objectives to accomplish and they can kill or hinder the other players. And unlike the previous concept, this is something that I truly love 
and I enjoyed immensely in Hidden Plight Side and I also enjoyed a lot in this game. There is a mini game in which everyone is a prisoner and they have to activate three generators before escaping through the sewers and this one was already quite fun. Then we had the race. The race is something that we have already seen in Hidden Playside, but here it plays differently in the sense that it's not about becoming the first um, at the finish line, it's about being the last player alive. There are also cops coming after you and they will randomly shoot at the, the, the prisoners. So you might want to use your sniper to protect your back and, and kill a cop in your lane, but then someone might think it's your lane. So to distract them, you might kill a cop in another lane, but maybe you're helping another player. You know, it's this sort of mind game that I really appreciate. You don't have a limited number of ammo for the sniper, it's just slowly reloading. So you, you can have fun like shooting a lot, but you need to be still you still need to be careful. And it works very well, it's fun, we loved it. And then there was another minigame that was awesome. Um, like up to three players are cops, up to three players are prisoners prisoners they need to deactivate all of the cameras and escape. What the cops can do besides killing is they can give orders like they can tell go sit and the, the prisoners the AIs the NPCs they will find an empty chair and sit but then if it's a player like like under pressure they might go in the room and everyone is already sitting and they're like oh no, I hope the, the cop didn't notice that I, I went into the wrong room and then they leave and then go in another room and the cop is like, yeah, yeah, I want to know what you're doing. And so, you know, it's like role playing and it's really fun and we love to play this. We loved a lot. So I really recommend this game. It's still in early access and there are some things that will need to be changed. Like, like the race, everyone is looking the same, the prisoner, which makes sense, of course, but it makes it very difficult to know which lane, which player you were looking at and to, which behavior you were observing. So in the end, it, it's not really about detecting the others and more like surviving. And so this could be improved and also new mini games will be added in, in the duration of the early access, but so far it's already solid and very promising. And then finally another early access game is Save Your Nut. This one is very rough around the edges. Like when I played it there was no executable of the game except if I was opting in for a beta. And one of the mini games was just simply not working in local play. So technically I wouldn't recommend it until it's in a better state. But the game itself is already very very fun. On top of that, it's a sports game, like there is a nut which is like the ball in soccer or football and it has to be scored on one side or the other, like people are into teams. Quite a few other party games have already tried to do this, but it never really clicked with me. Well here, it works. Like there are lots of power-up, speed, shield, every animal has its own, like is a class with its own stats. And there are more powerful power-ups that you can dig up from the ground, such as a jetpack. So it's very messy and it's very fun. You can throw the ball, you can attack. It feels chaotic with lots of things going on at any given time, but you also still feel in control. And I think it's a perfect mix between chaotic and being in control. This game can be played up to 8 players, online or local, and can also fill in the ranks with bots. So you have the basic uh, game mode with uh, like one nut, one ball that you have to score on one side or the other, but you also have like one with 5 nuts, and they're all on the field at the same time. You can actually steal them even after they're scored, so you can dig in the enemy goal and, and steal a nut and bring it back to your base. People all over the place doing their thing, like defending, attacking, uh, stealing, it's really fun. And also, there are many different maps with like different quirks. Like you have one with spikes or stairs that suddenly like retract and everyone is sliding off the stairs. And you have one with a shuttle taking off, people taking in the blast are killed. Or you have one with like, a, it's on two different levels upstairs and then downstairs uh, of a waterfall and you have a bumper to get back up and you have one with trains hitting players on the side 
And there is one that was very fitting for the last game mode. Last game mode is balloons, so it's more like deathmatch. You have you have three balloons on your character, which is like three uh, health points. And we didn't enjoy this one as much because the, the brawling aspect of the game is a bit too messy to be enjoyable just by itself. But there was one map with two pirate ships next to each other and the players can actually interact with the cannons to fire them and so whenever it started each team rushed to the cannons and fire on the other side and it was really hilarious. So this one is a fun game that I sort of recommend with the caveat that it's not technically ready yet. Alright, that wraps it up for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Bye!